Hey folks, Mike McDonald here again with you from uh, Mayday Flight Tutoring. Um, the latest in my E6B series of videos. It's been a couple of months uh, since I've made a video and I've gotten some good reactions and feedback from those videos. Um, and I did promise that I would do a video uh, on the reverse side of the E6B. We've been working on the uh, calculator side uh, in all of these videos for things like calculating true airspeed, true altitude, um, fuel burn calculations, time and distance calculations. But on the back is a completely different set of calculations or a different calculation that we can do. I'll just show you here on my, there's a slide, there's a piece that slides in. There it is there. And it moves up and down. It's a set of instructions at the top. There's a wheel that turns. Great thing, 80 years old, E6B. All right, so here's one right here on the screen. And uh, you can see the compass rose at turns against the true index. And you can see that the whole device slides up and down on the back of the E6B. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of a refresh on this to make sure it's all working good. There we go. Now move it over to the side. I also have here a set of problems. Well, before I get to the set of problems, let's just talk, well, what's this thing for? Well, have you ever heard from the reading um, or seen from the reading this thing called the triangle of velocities? The triangle of velocities. It's a geometric um, process or calculation that allows you to uh, correct for winds when trying to get from A to B uh, while flying, okay? So you wanna go from point A to point B, on a particular map course, okay? But the winds are either to your left or to your right or front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and they're trying to push you off the course. So how do you orient the aircraft in order to, in order to uh, keep on the true course, you know, based on a map? Well, you use the triangle of velocities calculation, okay? And the E6B, uh, the rear of the E6B is actually just a simplified version of doing something that you could do on paper, all right? It's called the triangle of velocities. And you can see right here, that is what they call a triangle of velocities in order to figure out what your correction is for winds, okay? So that's built into the E6B and it allows you to make that calculation quickly and easily without, having to, without reverting to paper. You can do it on paper, but it's tedious. Not as tedious as you think, but less tedious. This is less tedious to use, okay? So the back of the E6B is all about your cross country. It's all about figuring out how to orient the aircraft in order to fly between point A and point B, okay? The other thing it's gonna give you is your ground speed. If you have a headwind, it's gonna be slower than your airspeed. If it's a tailwind, it's gonna be greater, okay? And this will, calculate that as the triangle of velocities would as well. So uh, the great thing about the E6Bs, they come with a really nice, really nice instruction manual with sample problems. But the great thing about the E6B is a lot of the instructions are printed right on the device itself, okay? So here it shows you for ground speed and true heading, okay? Well, how do you orient the aircraft to get from A to B without being pushed laterally by the winds? And what will your speed be over the ground? That's what this is going to tell you, all right? So you need to have certain bits of information uh, right off the bat, all right? You need to know what your winds are, okay? So you can get that from your aviation weather site, and the winds aloft at altitude will be given to you in degrees true, so map degrees, all right? And the code is, is uh, two numbers, two numbers, two numbers, not always two numbers at the end. The first two numbers are the direction of the wind. So in this case, 330 degrees true. Remember, if it's written down, it's true, all right? 10 is the strength of the winds in knots. And the minus 10 is the temperature aloft, which you would need in order to, along with pressure altitude, to figure out what your true airspeed is using your pilot operating handbook, knowing your pressure altitude and the temperature, the density altitude of the air, essentially, you will be able to figure out what your true airspeed is. And you need that for this calculation because it's the speed that your plane's flying through the air. So it's important. The other given is for our magnetic heading, 
you need to know what the variation is in the part of the planet that you reside. So here out in Eastern Canada, 20 degrees west is pretty standard. So I picked 20 degrees west. Remember when you're converting from true to magnetic, West is best, east is least. So if it's west, you add to your true to get your magnetic. And if it's east, you subtract from your true to get your magnetic. And of course, the reverse happens if you want to convert from magnetic to true. And uh, there's the true course, the, 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 the trip that we want to fly, what over the map, 195 degrees true. OK, so that's the direction we want to fly. So um, just a little bit east of south, all right? So what is the information that we need for our cross-country planning? Well, we need to know what our, what we know what our true course is. Well, what's the magnetic course going to be? Okay, and that's based on the winds. What's the magnetic heading going to be? All right, and that's based on the variation. And what's the compass heading going to be? Which you actually orient your aircraft on with the compass. And that's going to be based on the deviation card in your aircraft or in the uh, journey log of the aircraft for maintenance that because every compass uh, in an airplane suffers some anomalies based on the metal in the aircraft and electronics in the aircraft and so sometimes adjustments have to be made and the ground speed how how fast we'll be flying over the ground okay so we can do all of that with the E6B and the triangle of velocity and ground speed calculation can all be done. All we have to do is just follow the instructions. So let's do that. Number one, for ground speed and true heading, set the wind direction under true index. Okay, well, there's the true index. And we know the winds are from 330. So there's 330. So it's asking us to set the wind direction 330 under the true index. Bingo. Okay, we've done that. Number two, mark the wind velocity up from the center point. Okay, mark with a pencil or a Sharpie, not permanent ink, because there's a plastic sort of clear coating over this thing. You can use a pencil and make a little dot. And then as it moves around up and down, you can follow the dot. Well, the electronic E6B, which by the way, I should mention, was designed by a guy named Jared Thompson. And uh, it's used uh, at a university, actually, the uh, University of North Dakota Aerospace Division. And I will supply a link for this wonderful electronic E6B in the comment section or in the description section of this video. So just getting back to it, mark wind velocity up from center point. Well, there's the center point there. The first thing you want to do is, well, how do you know where to put the center point? Well, just put it on any easily definable uh, vertical gradation. So there's a hundred. So I usually set it on there to start with. All right. Once I've set my true true course under the true index, then I'll set the center point on 100. You could pick 110. You could pick 120, 130. It doesn't really matter, uh, as you'll see. But I set mine on 100. Then it says slide the wind velocity mark up. Sorry, set true course under true index. So now we got to turn it again. Set the, oh, we did that, I'm sorry. Set wind direction on the true index, we did that. Mark wind velocity up from the center point. Okay, mark wind velocity up from the center point. 10 knots, set the center point. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Uh, 10 knots, 100 plus 110 plus 10 is 110. So I'm just gonna double click here, which is the equivalent of using a pencil to, to uh, make a mark. And there it is. So I made a 10 knot wind up from my baseline of 100. Cool. So that's it. Uh, mark wind velocity up from center point. Now, part number three, set true course under true index. OK, well, the true course we want to fly is 195. All right, right there now, that's the winds there. But we want to take the 195. There's 195. We're going to throw it up to the true index. You will note that our little wind dot is swung around and it's now to the right behind or below um, the center point. So that's significant, all right? So we've done that and you can start to get the sense of what's going on here. Okay, maybe the winds are to our right and behind us. Mm. All right, set true course under true index, done. Slide wind velocity mark to true airspeed. Okay, the wind velocity mark is the little red mark we made. We need to slide it up to the true airspeed that we have calculated the aircraft will fly during this cross country. And that's 105. 
So I'm just moving that center dot up right there, halfway between 100 and 110 to 105. All right, we're just following the instructions. The ground speed reads under the center. Oops, I'm sorry. I put the I put the, the center part on there. I think it's a rough day for me today. Uh, let me just move that. 105. There we go. I want to put the true airspeed mark on 105, not the center dot. Now the center dot reads our actual ground speed, which is 112. All right, you can see 110, 111, 112. Okay, so we have an answer to we have an answer to uh, one of these questions. So that's great. So I'm just going to select that, and we know now it's 112 knots. One, two, and OTS. 112 knots. Super. All right. Now we can fill in the rest of this uh, information, okay? And annotate and off and we'll just move this over here. You can see these little calculations we have here that's given for you, all right? First of all, what we've done the ground speed, it says in six, the wind correction angle, which you can see here, uh, WCA, see that wind correction angle, see that right there? Reads between the center line and the wind velocity mark. Okay, what do they mean by that? Well, there's the center line and there's the wind velocity mark, all right? So you can see it's to our right and you can see that the, uh, the vertical lines are divided by degrees, okay? So if you wanna go from A to B, all right? And the wind is to your right, and it's true pushing you to the left off course, obviously you have to correct to the right. Well, that's what this is showing you, okay? It's showing that we need to make a correction to the right of four degrees, pretty much four degrees, all right? So let's just go through some of these calculations, all right? The magnetic course would be the true course, which is 195, plus the variation, okay? Where our variation is 20 west, so we need to add 20. So that's 195, so plus 20, 205, 215, all right? So our, our magnetic course is 215, all right? So we'll just put that in here. 215, 215 degrees magnetic, all right? All right, so that's the magnetic course because the variation, all right? The magnetic heading is going to apply the correction that we need. Do we turn right to combat the winds from our right or do we point left to combat the winds to our left? Okay, whether the winds are in front of us or behind us, they're not gonna, very rarely are they directly off our nose or our tail. There's usually some left or right component. So this is the crab angle you need to stay on course. So it says that the magnetic heading is the magnetic course, which we've just figured out because we put the variation in, plus or minus a left or right wind correction angle. Well, it's a right wind correction angle, right? Remember, it's a right hand wind correction angle because it's to our right. There it is there, plus four degrees, all right? So we need to turn right four degrees in order to stay on that original magnetic course, which was calculated from our true course. Okie dokie, so let's do that. Select plus four degrees. That's 219 degrees. So that heading is where you point the airplane. The course is the, is, is the line that the airplane's going on. All we did to get magnetic course was just add the variation to our true course, which is just standard map work, right? Every, there's variation lines all along, west to east around the globe, uh, based on how true north is offset from magnetic north because the magnetic north pole is not in line with the true north pole. So that was a simple calculation. And now what we've done was for the magnetic heading, all right, we've added the wind correction angle because the winds are behind us from the right by four degrees. We have to turn to the right by four degrees, okay? And because it's behind us, you can see our ground speed is actually higher than our true airspeed, okay? So we've determined what our crab angle is, our magnetic heading, all right? But here's the thing. Compasses in airplanes suffer from, a, from an effect called deviation. 
deviation from what it should be. And the reason for that is the compass cannot be completely free from the magnetic effects of other pieces of metal in the dash of the airplane. So every aircraft will have a compass deviation calculation done by the AME, the AMO, or the AME, the mechanic, the AMP in the United States, um, who will orient the airplane around the compass rows and then look at the compass knowing what it should be and then make the correction and on a little card that's on the dash of the airplane and then also record it in the journey log. So you need to know what the deviation card chart is for that particular aircraft, not model of aircraft, that particular airplane. Okay, so all we're doing now is making it possible to orient the airplane using the compass. So that's why we need to figure out what our compass heading is, all right? Our compass heading is our magnetic heading plus or minus deviation, all right? So say that you're at, at 219, okay? Um, you're not gonna have 219 um, written on your, on your deviation chart, but you'll have the closest, um, uh, the closest uh, division of the 360 with the correction. So let's just say it's plus two degrees, all right, based on your deviation card. So we'll just put that in there, plus two degrees. Select. So 219 plus two, let's say it's plus two degrees, is 221 degrees magnetic. All right, there we go. Remember, the compass heading is just simply the magnetic heading, all right, which we've used the wind correction chart or wind correction function, the triangle velocities on the E6 speed to determine with the winds and our true course and our true airspeed and the variation, all that stuff, right? But remember, every airplane has anomalies with this compass. So I'm just arbitrarily picking a two degree, um, a two degree correction. It could be zero degrees. It depends on the aircraft, but I just put it in there because I wanted to go through all of these calculations. So there you go. That's the uh, use of the uh, triangle velocities of the E6 B. And just to recap, all right, I'll just quickly go back to the calculations here very quickly. Remember the very first thing we were supposed to do was to set wind direction under true index. So the winds were 330, 330, under true index, there it is there. Mark wind velocity up from center point. I put the center point on 100. And then I marked with the red dot, the 10 knot wind up from 100. You can see it there, all right? Then the next thing we're supposed to do is set the true course under the true index, the true course, the map course, which is 195 degrees. There's 195 degrees. You can see how the wind dot has now swung around behind and to the right. All right. Then slide the wind velocity mark to the true airspeed. So take the wind velocity mark, which is the red mark at oops, 195, and move it up to the true airspeed, which was 105 knots. That gives us a ground speed of 121 marks. You can see the winds behind us to the right. Pushes the airplane forward by an extra uh, six knots. So that's pretty good. Nice little headwind. And so we can read the ground speed of 121, which, or sorry, uh, did I say, where are we here? 120, 112, no, 121, I said 112, 105. Oh, I see, I made a mistake here, 105, <laughs> there we go, 112. And there I did that. And then the wind correction angle reads between the center line and the wind velocity mark. Well, you can see it's clear to the right and it's less than five degrees. It's like one line less than five degrees. So it's plus four degrees. So we need the, the winds behind us to the right. We need to orient aircraft four degrees to the right to combat the wind wanting to push us off to the left. Make sense? All right, sorry for the few little uh, blips there. It's, a, it's surprisingly difficult to make a video like this and not start over and over and over again. So I leave little errors in and just correct them as I go. But at any rate, you can see what I'm up to here using the triangle of velocities on the E6B. Again, if you wanna look up triangle velocities, if you're in Canada from the ground up, if you're in the United States, it's described uh, in publications that are available in PDF from the FAA website. Um, 
it's a great thing. Notice that there's also a, a crosswind calculator for runways. That's kind of handy. And uh, even definitions of terms. True course, true airspeed, true heading. All right. Hey, look at that. There's even rulers on the left and right of this bad boy. And of course, the crosswind calculator. Such a great device, the E6B. I love it so much. Anyway, that's the video for today. The first video I've made since, God, February, March, April, May, June, four months. I've been meaning to make more videos. Um, and I was actually prompted to make more videos by comments I was starting to get on earlier videos. And I was thinking, hmm, I should keep this up. Plus, I have to keep my brain sharp because I'll be flying again soon. So this is really good for me to do that. At any rate, like I said, I'll post the link to this uh, electronic E6B uh, in the description of the video. And I hope you enjoyed this video, that it was useful in spite of my uh, gaffes on the fly. But I think I got the information through to you folks. And you can always review it. And then, of course, go to the instruction manual in your E6B or go online or go to the books. But yeah, great device, the E6B. And uh, that's a heck of a machine. I just love it. At any rate, I hope you have a great day. And I will concoct another video for you soonish. I mean, it is summertime. Got to be outside in the sun. See you later. Tailwinds.